Welcome to the shooting show. This week we bring you a foxing masterclass from Mark Ripley and we bring you essential news from a game fair set to debut in 2016. The UK game fair set to be the big one. So just sat out in the high seat. We were actually waiting, um, waiting for deer, see if we'd, uh, any deer come along. Um, but as, as typical, it was a fox come along. <laughs> Long range foxer Mark Ripley is at it again. First thing I spotted was just the tail sticking straight up out of the long grass. And the straight away recognised it as being attached to a fox. So um, we tried giving it a little squeak just to see if we could get it to put its head up. It was mousing around in the grass, I think. Um, but literally just had his tail strut up in the air, like an aerial. And we tried squeaking it, didn't take any notice, so we gave it the, the classic boy. Oh. And it just looked up enough to, to show the body and, um, yeah, use the, uh, Brown X bolt there, two, four, three, and um, it certainly certainly hit it hard. It knocked it straight down, done the job. It's only probably 70, 80 yards, so wasn't really much of a test for the rifle, but it um, it certainly uh, certainly whacked it hard. So yeah, very impressed with that. With Mark's experience, Ellie's success is a regular occurrence. This is the dairy farm where we are now. They actually have quite a lot of foxes on this ground. I think they use it as a bit of a cut through sometimes. But foxes have a, a bit of a habit of running through the, through the farmyard. Uh, they tend to make a mad dash through there when there's people about, which tends to get the cattle running from one end of the yard to the other, and uh, the farmer's quite concerned that he's going to have cattle slipping over in the yard and breaking a leg or something like that so he's quite keen to to see any foxes on the ground um, rid of. I've got a golf course, do the fox control and rabbit control on that. A uh, little local zoo as well, we had some issues there with foxes um, taking flamingos one year which was um, costing the zoo quite a lot of money. And um, another little dairy farm, yeah several, several small farms, a couple of small holdings just anywhere really where foxes are causing a problem or rabbits. The uh, the hill ground, which is uh, quite a vast area, um, so mainly grazing for sheep up there. Well, the main reason on there is um, is purely in the spring when they're lambing. They have um, some of the region of about 1,200 lambs across those hills, um, and when you get foxes that are starting to, to to prey on them and take in those, they get a taste for the lambs and then um, that starts costing a lot of money. So yeah, it's important to keep the numbers down there. So uh, I tend to get out there quite a lot, shooting at night with a night vision and the 223 on, quite often used for that. Um, or uh, out in the early mornings with a, with a decent long range rifle and uh, just stay put in one area and then sort of try and pick them off from a bit of distance. From from first light, you probably get the first sort of people up there walking their dogs. You get a few um, members of the public up there walking dogs and uh, cycling, running, all sorts of things. Uh, but you get a you get a few hours. It's better in the uh, earlier on in the year. You get a bit longer. But um, you normally get two to two to four hours, I suppose, before anyone really gets up there. So. We 
had quite a few in, in the spring up there. Um, we seem to have got the numbers down a little bit there now, so it hasn't been too bad. But uh, yeah, we um, probably take a, a couple off there, a, a month I suppose, nothing, nothing too much. But the uh, trouble is as soon as you, you shoot a couple, there's a couple more move in, so it's a bit of a constant battle. That hill's on the edge of a village, so uh, yeah, you do get you do get foxes coming off of the off the houses there, out the back gardens, and coming down the hill. Um, but there's also a lot of foxes that actually just live up on the hills there. There's plenty of plenty of patches of gorse and that for them to to hole up in. Max long range vigils aren't done for sport; they're a necessity. The long range side of things, that, that really stemmed from shooting the hill ground uh, in the early mornings. I ended up uh, just through necessity really starting to push the distance out because it's very hard to get close to anything up there. It's uh, with the shape of the hills um, and uh, shooting across the valleys, you, you very rarely get much closer than two, three hundred yards. So very often you're looking at shots of four, five hundred yards. So. Um, yeah, I found that I had to kind of start looking into different different methods of uh, getting onto them. It certainly accounted for a fair few. Yeah, I mean that, that's just a, it's another challenge long range shooting. It's um, you've got the foxing and you've got the long range aspect. Um, a lot of people seem to think long range is a bit a bit chancy, but uh, if you've worked out the ballistics for your rifle and your ammunition and you range the target correctly and you've read the wing correctly then um, it's, it's more scientific than, than skill to be honest. We're using a, um, a Brown and X bolt in 243. I'm using um, 75 grain Norma ammo which it seems to shoot particularly well. Um, it's giving a good good group, I was getting sort of half inch groups with it um, out at 100 yards so I was quite impressed with that. We're using um, a Swarovski scope on there which is the new uh, one with the ballistic turret on there. Um, yeah sports match mounts on there as well which are good solid mounts and um, it's proving to be very accurate. Haven't had it all that long though no, I've just um, only really just sort of started getting to grips with it and pushing the distance out um, but it's a very easy rifle to shoot not any problems with it. it. Does what it says on the tin. The wind is the biggest biggest problem. Yeah, your elevation is is pretty constant. You can um, you can suss that out without too much too much ado. I'm using a uh, an app on the phone. It's just uh, an old iPhone, but it's um, it's got a ballistic app on there, which is uh, Strelock. What you do is you you enter your muzzle velocity in there, a uh, BC of the uh, bullet, basically all the all the ballistic side of things into that and that'll work out your drops for you and also your windage as well on there. That's a very handy little gadget. The windage is the, is the biggest biggest problem that you'll uh, come up against. You can use a wind meter to take the, the wind speed of where you are. Um, you can also use kind of natural um, indicators like uh, leaves blowing in the trees, grass blowing, um, things like that, you can feel it on your face, you can get a pretty good idea just just like that. Uh, you can also use the Mirage, you can, um, you can, if you've got a sunny day like today, it's quite a good uh, good day for being able to read the Mirage and you can you can just put your scope just a little bit out of focus, just wind it back a little bit uh, and you can actually see the heat waves coming off the ground and by going by the angle of those heat waves it gives you a pretty good indication of obviously which way the wind's going and also the speed of it as well depending on the angle. So there's various different methods of, uh, of working that out. The other fox that uh, I shot with it was um, that was out at 250 yards. That's quite a, quite a good test for the rifle. Um, I was actually just walking back from the, I just put a steel target out and I was just wandering back from there and I spotted the fox going the other way along the hedgerow. I very quickly made a dash back to the high seat and um, 
managed to dial in, use the straddle cap for that. Um, I think it gave me a correction of, I think it was just uh, about a minute and a half of uh, elevation. It's a pretty still day, just aimed just behind the um, the, uh, the leg of the fox, front leg of the fox. Fired and it, uh, it drops it absolutely perfectly. Spot on shot placement with it, so I was very impressed actually with the whole setup with the scope and um, the way the rifle was shooting. So yeah, for a factory rifle, factory scope, factory ammunition, that, that's that's pretty impressive. Pretty good game. Little vixen. Nice perfect chest shot there. Excellent. That's spot on. Top end equipment combined with knowledge and experience have done the job once again. Mark there showing us what he does best. And now it's the shooting show news. This is the Shooting Show News. A new national game fair has been launched for 2016 and it's set to replace the CLA game fair as the shooting world's must attend event. The UK game fair will take place at Stoneley on the 22nd to the 24th of July next year. Already some of the industry's biggest names such as Beretta, Ruger, Parazzi, EJ Churchill, Cesar Guarini and William Powell have lent their support. And Stoneley Abbey is set to give the event a scenic backdrop. The man behind the show is Wes Stanton, who owns the shooting show as well as a wide range of shooting magazines such as Sporting Rifle, iShoot and Clay Shooting. We'll have more details as soon as they emerge. £246 million. That's how much shooters spend on food and accommodation every year, according to a new Bask infographic on how shooting boosts tourism. Shooting is responsible for more than 4 million visitor nights every year, Bask has revealed. And it accounts for almost 10% of the total national spend on outdoor recreation every year. A spokesperson said that when the stark facts are presented, it is amazing just how much shooting contributes to the rural economy. Police forces are trying to make shooters' lives easier. Yes, really. The Metropolitan Police has set up a new panel to improve cooperation and communication between the police and shooters. Representatives from Basque will attend its meetings and let the cops know what shooters' main concerns are. It also means we could hear about legal and policing developments more quickly. And finally, the League Against Cruel Sports was left with egg on its face after a number of factual errors were revealed in its latest report. The pressure group produced a report slamming grouse more management with an accompanying video. But Basque highlighted a number of unreferenced sweeping statements in the report, based on a single case or no evidence at all. Basque's Alan Balfour said the report was intended to deceive policymakers and was a mark of how irresponsible extremist bodies such as the League can be. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show. Sure.